For everyone following the story so far, this is recounting the few years of my youth, early middle 20s, when I was hitchhiking and traveling across the U.S. on the road, starting in 1981, May of 1981. Leading through that summer, I had gone from Virginia along Highway Interstate 40 West through North Carolina, Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and into California and into L.A. and spent a lot of my summer, that first summer of 81, in the Los Angeles area. Downtown I'd go to the missions and feed up and then go back out to the beaches and look around there. Traveled up and down the coast there quite a ways around the Los Angeles area and uh, spent a couple, three weeks in Yosemite just got through talking about that. Yosemite Valley, the National Park and the Valley area of Yosemite National Park. Where Half Dome is in El Capitan, and some of the really great, beautiful cliff sides they say were formed by glacier action. Beautiful park if you get a chance. It's the park Yosemite Sam was named after familiar with that cartoon character. Oh, that makes me mad. I can't do it quite right, but you know the guy, Warner Brothers, used to fight with Bugs Bunny a lot. From Yosemite National Park, I went to Sacramento, the state capital of California. Also the site of Sutter's Mill, the Gold Rush, part of the California Gold Rush of the 1880s, 1890s, I forget exactly when, 1800s, and beautiful town there, Sacramento also being state capital, a lot of history there. Um, and it's also where I met uh, Street guy who was kind of street wise, I don't know, he may not call it wise. He was a little bit into petty theft. But I think he might have done some breaking and entering. I didn't do any of that with him. Uh, I don't know that he did it. I heard him talk about it some. And every now and then he'd show up with a new camera or something. And, you know. We mostly just would hang out occasionally when. I was going to a soup line or whatnot, and he said, come on, let's go get some beer or something if you had some money. He also was one of the first people who talked to me about railroads and how to ride the rails, hoboing on freight trains, which I do not recommend, and please, anyone watching this, this is for entertainment purposes only, I'm not trying to teach anybody anything that would get them in trouble or hurt them otherwise harm property or anything else encourage crime I'm not trying to do any of that but he talked to me about some plain sense things about railroads in most railroad yards which are the big conglomeration of where a lot of tracks will lead into a little nude, usually outside or right near some of the industrial areas of a city, he said, if you notice which way the tracks are running, and you see a train loading up on the track going out the way that you want to go, for instance, if you want to go west, and you see a freight train loading up to go west, that's where you want to hide out and wait until that freight train starts to take off. Run up to it, jump on it. A lot of times, if they don't see you, well, you're good. If they see you and the train's moving anyway, a lot of times they don't care if it's an empty car you're jumping on or you're not 
in the yard, they don't have certain jurisdiction things. I guess they could call the train and next stop maybe look for you. But it wasn't a real big police thing then. We didn't have terrorists and all that in the U.S. So it wasn't what's the same climate as we had now. I guess nowadays people would worry about, oh, we're just gonna blow up the train or something. Anyway, so and a hobo on a freight train ride and still goes on today. So this this still happens. Just I think it was a little bit kinder, gentler error then. The time was different. Anyway, he was saying, a lot of times, the workers in the yard even will tell you what train's getting ready to go where. Oh, yeah, that train out there, they're going out there to, uh, that one's heading towards San Francisco. They'll tell you. I'm going to leave around 5 o'clock. And um, the workers in the yard, you know, they're not responsible for you or your safety or whether or not you're on a freight car or whatnot. Anyway, so this guy was telling me all this, and he said, the main guy you got to worry about in the yard, most of the time the main guy you got to worry about is what they call the bull. Your bull is the head security guy, and he's looking for you. So he's the one you don't want to get spotted by. If you get spotted by the security guy, it is his job to do something about you, to get you out of the yard or off the train, if you're trying to get on a train, whatever. So anyway, he was saying the main thing to do is don't really get in the yard. Wait till the train's about starting to leave out of whatever end of the yard you want to go in, whatever direction. If you want to go west, go out toward the west end of the yard, maybe even outside of the yard, but along the tracks, along the west leading tracks, the tracks going to the west. And when that train's starting to leave, it's not going 50, 60 miles an hour right away, it's going two or three miles an hour, four or five miles an hour, and that's slow enough, a lot of times you can jump on it. And he told me about various cars you can ride on. Tell me the piggybacks. I do not believe I would want to ride there, but he said you can do it. And the way you ride on one of the cars that has the piggybacks, they call it piggybacks. It's, it's a trailer. A truck trailer basically riding on a flatbed car. A train car. So you got a flatbed train car and you got a truck trailer sitting up there. No cab. It's just a truck trailer. Like an 18-wheeler trailer. And it's chocked in there. They got the blocks in there. And then you got the straps and chains on it or whatever to keep it from rolling around. But he said you get right up under the wheels there. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of them I didn't try but obviously any of the cars that you get on you don't want to be seen if you are seen even if the yard people don't do it or even if the train engineer fireman or any of the conductors or anybody on the train see you and don't report you you don't want people from the public saying oh there's hobos on your train or whatever calling the police and having the train pulled over searching a train, throwing you off, or maybe even throwing you in jail. It's technically trespassing. I'm not sure what it is if you're actually on the train somewhere. It may still be trespassing. You're on the property of the train company or whatever. But um, So wherever you're riding it, you want to kind of be out of sight. If you get under the wheels of those piggyback trailers, they can't see you. I think it's enough room you can stretch out. But all I could figure is the thing would be bouncing up and down, and who knows, you know, it shifted a little bit one side or the other. That's 